Uh, I feel like I'm drowning in saliva. What are you talking about, Oliver? I'm eating lemon gummies right now. They're really sour, so it makes my mouth produce a lot of saliva. Sour gummies can be really intense in terms of acidity. Yeah, I feel like my saliva is overflowing from my mouth. It made me wonder, why does eating sour things make our mouths produce so much saliva? It's strange. That's an interesting question, Oliver. In short, it's to prevent harmful substances from entering our bodies. Huh, what do you mean? Is there a connection between harmful substances and sourness? I can't quite imagine it. You seem to have become more curious recently, Oliver. Yeah, I've realized that it's more fun to have an interest in things rather than being indifferent. I like that way of thinking. Since we're here, should I explain the relationship between sourness and saliva? Yeah, I'll count on you. So this time, I'm going to explain why saliva is produced when we eat something sour. When asked about sour food, what comes to mind, Oliver? Well, I immediately think of lemons and limes. Then what comes to mind when I mention food that has turned sour? If something becomes sour, it means it wasn't sour to begin with, right? Hmm, what could it be? Oh, I have an image of pickles that have gone bad and become sour. That's a good point, Oliver. I think there are quite a few people who experience a sour taste when they eat pickles or yogurt that has gone bad. What I want you to pay attention to here is that food tends to become sour as it spoils. Even foods other than pickles and yogurt often become more acidic as they deteriorate. Actually, I remember once when I left hot pot out for two days and it became sour. After eating it, I had a stomach ache. Exactly. Just as you experienced food that becomes sour due to spoilage often causes trouble in the body. Food is a source of nutrition for humans, but it also becomes food for microorganisms. And these microorganisms break down the food, sometimes transforming it into substances that are harmful to humans. In other words, spoiled food becomes sour and may contain substances that are harmful to the body. Uh, so spoilage means that microorganisms break down the food and produce harmful substances? Yes, that's right. By the way, spoilage and fermentation are actually the same biological phenomenon. For when the substances produced by microorganisms breaking down food are harmful to the body, we call it spoilage. Yogurt and the like are major examples of fermented foods. Wow, I had no idea that fermentation and spoilage were the same reaction. But wait, isn't Japanese natto also a fermented food? I wonder why natto doesn't taste sour like yogurt or vinegar? Well, the fermentation that occurs in natto is actually a bit different from other fermented foods. Generally, when food ferments, organic acids are produced. For example, yogurt produces lactic acid. Vinegar produces acetic acid. When we consume these organic acids, we taste sourness. On the other hand, natto doesn't produce organic acids. So natto is like the rebel among fermented foods. Yes, exactly. Now, let's get back on track. When food tastes sour, it can indicate that it is spoiled. There are also cases where toxic substances can have a sour taste. So, we can conclude that sour foods have a higher chance of being harmful to the body. I'm curious, does that mean that lemons and limes are sour because they contain harmful substances? No, not all sour foods are bad for you. As I mentioned earlier, acetic acid, lactic acid, and citric acid found in lemons and limes are generally not harmful to the body. It's just that sourness in general has a higher chance of being harmful, but not all sour foods are necessarily harmful. I see, so there are some sour foods that are bad for you, but there are also some that are not. I understand that sourness is often associated with harmful substances. But what about the excessive production of saliva? Ah, before we get into that, let me explain the general reaction of animals when they eat something sour. Animals, in general, will immediately spit out sour food. Even in humans, when babies are given sour food, they tend to spit it out. This is because the sour sensation is uncomfortable for animals. So sourness is an unpleasant sensation for animals. As humans age, our taste buds gradually become less aligned with the natural state so it might be difficult for us to imagine. But for most animals, sourness equals discomfort. That's why when animals eat something sour, they immediately spit it out and also expel the remaining sourness in their mouth with their saliva. So it's not just about spitting out the food. That's right. If we accidentally ingest something poisonous, it's not enough to just vomit it out. We also need to get rid of any remaining trace of the food in our mouth or else it can be dangerous. And the safest way to remove the leftover food from our mouth is by rinsing it with a large amount of saliva. 
and expelling it along with the saliva. So the saliva that comes out when we eat something sour is like a cleansing solution for the toxins in our mouth. Yes, exactly. Think of it like gargling. Hmm, I never knew that. I never thought that saliva was meant to prevent toxins from entering our body. By the way, the timing of when we sense sourness is not when the sour element touches the sourness sensor on our tongue, but when it moves away from the sourness sensor. Really? I always thought that when I eat a lemon, I immediately taste the sourness. I thought it was a lie too when I first heard about it, but it seems to be true. In fact, the sourness sensors are located very close to the salivary glands. The salivary glands, as the name suggests, are the tissues that secrete saliva. The salivary glands secrete saliva at various times, including when food enters the mouth and comes into contact with the tongue and the mucous membranes inside the mouth. So, when something sour enters the mouth and the sourness component comes into contact with the taste buds, the salivary glands immediately was away the sourness component because the time from when the sourness component touches and then leaves is extremely short. It feels like we sense the sourness instantly when we eat something sour. I see there's almost no delay, so we don't notice it. But why do we feel the sourness when the sour food moves away from the taste buds instead of when it comes into contact with them? It would be simpler and more straightforward to feel the sourness when it touches the taste buds. That's to minimize the possibility of toxins entering our body. As I mentioned earlier, when we taste the sourness, it's because saliva is secreted after we have expelled the substance that causes the sourness, and the saliva washes away the remaining traces in our mouth. So what we want the saliva to work on is not when there is food in our mouth, but after we have expelled the food from our mouth. If the system was such that saliva is secreted when the sourness component comes into contact with the taste buds, then the most saliva would be secreted as soon as we put food in our mouth and then the secretion of saliva would gradually decrease. In that case, we wouldn't be able to effectively cleanse the remaining traces with saliva, which is the purpose of saliva secretion. Hmm, this seems like a difficult topic. Well, if you remember that saliva is a substance that cleanses the mouth to prevent toxins from entering the body, then you'll be fine. I see. I have a question though. Based on what we've discussed so far, it seems like sour foods have a high possibility of being poisonous. But in my everyday life, I have a positive image of sour foods. That's a good question, Oliver. Actually, both perspectives are not wrong. In nature, sour foods often tend to be spoiled or toxic. However, on the other hand, sour foods that are not spoiled or toxic can be beneficial to the body. For example, lemons and limes contain citric acid, which has effects such as fatigue recovery, blood thinning, prevention of low blood pressure and arteriosclerosis, and promotion of mineral absorption. Additionally, acetic acid, which is the main component of vinegar, is also beneficial for the body. Acetic acid has effects such as preventing diabetes and obesity and stabilizing post-meal blood sugar levels. So the sour foods I usually eat actually have many positive effects on the body. The idea that sourness indicates a potential poison and the notion that sour foods are good for the body can coexist. I always enjoyed thinking that sour foods could be good for me, so I was a little worried. You really love sour foods, don't you, Oliver? You can rest assured and enjoy eating sour foods. That's good to hear. But wait, isn't it a bit strange? Why do we as humans not only not feel disgusted when we eat sour foods, but actually find them delicious? Even if there is a possibility that something sour could be poisonous, it seems like the risk is too high to consider it delicious. That's a sharp observation, Oliver. When we find something potentially poisonous delicious, it could lead to consuming a large quantity of it, increasing the likelihood of poisoning and death. I had the same question and did some research, but it seems that there is no clear conclusion. Different papers with conflicting information were published, which is causing researchers a lot of headache. So this is just my speculation, but if you're okay with that, I can share my thoughts. Yes, please go ahead. All right, first of all, I think that ever since humans acquired a certain level of intelligence, the opportunities to eat poisonous or spoiled food have become extremely rare. Because humans can communicate complex ideas through language, harmful foods would have been shared as information within the community, creating a common understanding that they should not be consumed. From this perspective, sour foods that enter our mouths are limited to the ones that are good for our bodies. By preferring foods that are beneficial, there is a higher chance of maintaining good health and having a youthful appearance. 
In other words, people who enjoy eating sour foods have a higher chance of survival and their youthful appearance is directly linked to attractiveness to the opposite sex. Being attractive to the opposite sex increases the probability of having children, and the preference for sour foods is passed down through genetics, repeating until the present day, which is why we perceive sour foods as delicious. Well, this is just my imaginative explanation, though. I'm not entirely sure if I understand everything, but from what I heard, there doesn't seem to be any contradiction. It's true that if you eat healthy food, your skin will improve and you'll become more attractive. But in this story, I feel like there's no explanation for why babies dislike sour things. What do you think about that? I think it's because when babies are young, they put everything in their mouths. So it's difficult for them to share information about dangerous foods within their group. The idea that liking sour things has a positive effect only applies if there's a very low chance of toxic substances entering the body. But for infants who have a high probability of accidentally ingesting toxins, it's more effective for them to vomit sour things to protect their bodies. I see, that makes sense. Well, this is just my imagination, so I'd appreciate it if you don't take it as absolute truth. Understood, thanks for explaining. I learned a lot. You're welcome. So let's summarize what we've learned. Saliva is produced when we eat sour things because it's a natural defense mechanism to prevent harmful substances from entering our bodies. In nature, sour things often indicate decay or the presence of toxins. When we accidentally consume such things and then vomit, saliva is secreted to help remove any residue from our mouths. And the reason why modern humans enjoy sour things is because some sour things are actually good for our bodies. I understand. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening until the end. I plan to continue explaining everyday questions like this, so please come back and visit us again. Then, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.